I have a hobby and I really like it. And yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Waypan. My name is Cal. And I'm Sunny. Sunny, can you give us a bit of background info on you? Okay, so I'm a 2D digital artist. I've been doing 2D art since I was a kid, and I specialized in illustration when I was in college. So I know a thing or two about painting, at least digitally as well. And you did teach painting as well. And yes. Well, you taught art to children yes, specifically. Yes, I did that. Yes, I did. So you have just gotten into miniature painting or 3D painting, however you'd like to word it. And basically, that's what this whole interview is about. So tell us about it. So, of course, the first time I started um, 3D painting was when we had our first uh, Frostgrave campaign together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were 10 models we needed to paint up, but that seemed like a big undertaking when I saw your models. You know, they were so well done, I wasn't very sure how I would be able to transfer my 2D, you know, concepts and knowledge into 3D because it's now, you know, an actual thing a material how do you how do you transform a two-dimensional thing to a three-dimensional thing and apply the same concepts and it was a bit difficult for me to place those ideas especially when you helped me do xenothal priming on all my models i tried out one only one i painted only one as a trial and um i didn't know how to do it because um i was i didn't know how to layer the colors on top of them without you know erasing the lights and the darks that you've already set up for me um at the time i wasn't very sure about contrast paints as well so it was a bit difficult you tried out one and basically you were you were more more or less scared of miniature painting at that point in time mm. but more recently you've really gotten into it and what is it that allowed you to breach that barrier well when when i was at the warhammer shop they mm -hmm. had these pre-primed models white completely white bases because the new contrast paints had come out mm -hmm. so they just put those models there for people to try the try the paints you know we were there and we you know you told me why don't you give it a go you yep. know i was i i didn't actually want to do it because i was like eh, you know based on the last time and but i think something about seeing other people just slapping on colors on all those partially painted models over there because they're tester pieces you know yep. they're, they're not serious they're just just to put color on there see how the color looks like how does it show up that was the pure intent of it and i think i seeing that i somehow felt like okay maybe i could play around as well and i didn't think too much into it and i just started trying to fill colors into places and then i started experimenting layering different contrasts on top of each other and i was like i can see how the effects are coming into play now especially when you're laying contrast i'm like that's starting to look a little bit like tortured rusted metal and i think after experimenting with things and not getting into my head so much i was like i see how it works now you know? mm -hmm. With that considered, when you did the test paints, you weren't doing nearly as much experimentation. And I'd have to say that they didn't come out nearly as well as this batch of models. What was the difference between those tester models and you starting out, you know, really stepping up your game? So I think after doing the tester paints, I really saw what contrast paints could do. Mm -hmm. especially when you mix them around you know and you layer them up and then you, with even if it's different colors not exactly the same color and i think that just sparked an interest on like trying trying things out but so when i did the new set of models for my second campaign for frostgrave i decided you know i'm gonna give it a real shot you know i i seem to understand where things go now let's try it out and then you sort of encouraged me to use contrast paints first and then i did that i did exactly what i did in the shop i mixed up my own set of contrast paints with other different colors of contrast making my own custom contrast and then using highlights on top with where i mixed different base colors together and then 
dabbing it in with my fingers, which is things I just generally do in 2D art, you know? And it just I'm, I'm came gonna, out. I'm just going to cut you off there for a second because that leads us to the next thing, which is community reception. Now, you just talked about using the finger dabbing. Can you go into that a bit, how you've been received by the community and how it's been to come into the wargaming community? Okay, so the, the finger dabbing technique is just something that 2D artists do all the time because like you see all these like crazy abstract stuff that they do. Sometimes you look at it and be like, a child could do that. You know, you've probably heard lots of comments being passed around, but we are taught to use what we have to get the end result. So you don't need a bajillion and one tools to get what you want. So we've, we're very used to using our hands to, to get certain results, smudging, all this sort of techniques is very common in 2D traditional art, you know, painting, charcoal. These are all techniques we use all the time. So like, it was very natural for me to use my finger to dab the um, highlights into the highest points of my models mm -hmm. because your fingers have the perfect amounts of bounciness and um, texture on it that it does not only absorb just the right amount of paint off your model, but also sort of texturize it so it blends in with everything else. So you already come with the best tools you have and you just have to use them. It was very intuitive for me and when I talked about it on, you know, when I posted it up on Facebook, everyone was like going a bit, you know, crazy. Like, finger dabbing? That is unheard of. You know, I'm just like, what is this? What is this strange woman talking about? And I'm just like, it was just intuitive. I just did it. How has it been to come into the wargaming community? How have you felt about wargaming and what effect has it had on your motivation to get things painted? I think, um, well, would you consider Frostgrave as like wargaming because... It, like... it is. It is in the most technical sense. It's a skirmish game, but it is amongst them. Yeah, because I, I know that Warhammer is a huge huge thing but it wasn't something that I, I felt very deep like it's uh, too too big of a story for you to get into very easily but like when my first time we played Frostgrave I understood the rules fairly easily and it was easy for me to get into it but I think because of the story there's the way that you can just form a story very much much like D&D &D, right mm -hmm. there's a lot of freedom to it so when you're designing your models or painting them up, you can actually have a lot of creative freedom with how you want them to be. Think about the scenario, where you are, your environment, what kind of people are you trying to show your warband to be? Because my second set of models, I really wanted them to be like a mismatch of different types of creatures and people to show that like almost like an adventurer's guild. So these are like the things that I was thinking of at the back of my mind. That's how I think it helped with, you know, keeping me motivated in wargaming because I had that freedom. And I think if it was like Warhammer where you're just painting up an entire army of the exactly the same looking guys, it might be a different story. Speaking of that, one of the things that you noted was there are so many of the exact same color in your opinion, of all of these different things, you know, you've got your base, your layer, and so on, right? The variation is so small, why don't you just... Mix your own colors. And as I was explaining, that essentially the whole thing is that these people are trying to get things exact. They're trying to have a repeatable system. How does that make you feel as a artist coming into here and seeing that mindset seeing that everybody just wants to have a much more repeatable system rather than they're trying to create something for themselves. It's a bit difficult to say because like I understand what Warhammer is. It's an army and you did mention to me before when we had this discussion on the side that it's all about uniformity. It's an army. People aren't meant to have their own identities. It's about the army people want to know which legion you're from and that's the focus but i think it also takes away a lot of the fun from it like i know mm. i know how hard it is when i'm working on a piece and although i pulled it from my ass obviously i you know it, it you can get stuck in a rut 
about trying to finish that one piece of artwork. I couldn't imagine you painting up like, I don't know what, 500 um, space marines the exact same way. It must be sort of feel like you're a factory worker, you know, day in, day out, just champ, stomp, stomp, stomp the same thing over and over again. You know, I couldn't, I, I don't think I could do that. I really don't think I could do that. I, I understand. Let me finish this up with one final question. Do you think contrast paints were the deciding factor in whether you were going to try miniature painting or was it just simply having the testers what what made you do the jump from being somebody who peripherally had interest in the hobby to actually becoming a hobbyist Mm, i think the testing i think it definitely had to be the testing because It gave me an outlet to experiment because I didn't have to think about creating a piece that had to look good. So when I came out of the bubble of trying to make something look good and pressurizing myself on that and just giving myself some time to really understand how the medium works, I think that gave me an extra you know, boost of motivation. I was like, oh, I know how contrast paints works now. Not only with the consistency or how it applies, I just, it gives you an idea of how you can manipulate it to the best of your advantage. So also like some things I do now is also not only just mixing different colors of contrast paints, I might even mix a tiny dab of a base paint with an existing contrast paint because I want it to act like a contrast paint Mm -hmm. right so you have the medium of the contrast in the background and the base color just adds a different color to it so you have the color that you want but it acts like a contrast paint so it just that freedom of being able to manipulate things and understanding the way your materials work i think just gave me that extra motivation and confidence because i didn't feel like someone who didn't really know what they were doing anymore i was like I know how my paints work. I know how my models work now. I can get down to it and start experimenting. In fact, I experimented a lot on the uh, grot, the spider grots. Mm -hmm. Right, I tried different colors, different ways to layer, different ways to paint them up and see which one gets the best effect. And I really enjoyed that. And I think that just kept me wanting to do more and more (laughs) and more models. I've got to ask, do you think that you will continue with this painting hobby? I think so, yes. Because I never really had a hobby before. Like, I had things you, I did for you fun. You didn't consider your art before as, as a hobby? As a hobby, no. No, I think I, I considered it as something that I needed to improve on for the sakes of portfolio. or for the reasons. Yeah, professional reasons. So, I love being creative. I loved creative work. But as soon as I sat down to do it for myself, didn't feel like it. It just didn't come out the way. Just constantly feel pressured to just make it look good. One question, Mm. and we'll close it out there. Yeah. How do you think other people can turn, you know, their girlfriend, wife, partner, or just somebody who they like spending time with into this hobbyist, instead of just having them on the outside what was the change from that first model to this second batch experimentation taking the pressure away from it because it's very intimidating to want to mess up a model especially if it looks really nice right and you don't want to make it look bad so i think encouraging experimentation and making mistakes on models just giving it a try giving it a go you know see how you feel just get your hand feel on things get practical with it and enjoy the process i think it's a good way to bring someone into the painting community and turn it into a hobby really because that's what a hobby is meant to be something fun for you to do on the side in your free time that you know relaxes you and that has and and that is exactly what mini painting has been for me and that was like the moment where i went like this is what a hobby is supposed to feel like this this is what people keep talking about when they say the word hobby i actually know what it is now and that's why i was so proud and happy it's like i have a hobby and i really like it and yes 
So I think you should let people try things out. So if you have a wife or girlfriend, or if you're a girl and you already are a painter, you want to bring your boyfriend into it, <laughs> give a model to him. Put out some paints. Do a relaxing painting together. Encourage mistakes. Let him do or let her do whatever they want with it, and I think they'll realize it for themselves. Thank you very much for your time, Sunny. Thank you very much for having me, Cal. We'll see you next time, and keep those brushes wet. wet.